You may remember the time when you were young, when it suddenly hit you. There are only 365 days in a year, and there are way more than 365 people in the world, which means that every day must be somebody's birthday. And then as you got older, you probably realized every day was somebody's death day as well. People dying all the time. They say it's around 200,000 people a day. A day we have a, a birthday and a death day. The old woman who was part of the family that sponsored my first ordination in Thailand, who lived to be 100 years old, passed away a few days ago, just found out this morning. So it's good to think about the connection. Wherever there's birth, there's going to be death. And in most cases, wherever there's death, there's going to be birth. There are very few cases where death is not followed by birth. And those are actually the happiest cases. Those are the arahants. They're finally freed from all this. Think about the Buddha's vision on the night of his awakening, that second knowledge. Beings dying and being reborn, dying and reborn again and again and again. And it doesn't go anywhere. The only place it can go someplace and stay is when you get out. So you want to make that your compass point. It's time to get out. And that gives you something against which you can then measure all your other thoughts, all your other desires for happiness here, happiness there. And you realize if it's not out, it's just going to keep pulling you back. There's so much unnecessary suffering that goes on between birth and death and death and birth. And it's a lot of it is our own making. So this is what we have to look into. Why is it that even though we want happiness, everything we do is for the sake of happiness, we end up causing a lot of trouble? Where are we lying to ourselves? Where are we deceitful to ourselves? Where are we hiding things from ourselves so that we don't see the connection? Because that's what discernment is. As John Lee says, if you see causes but don't see their effects, that's not discernment. If you see effects but you don't see the causes, that doesn't count as discernment either. Discernment sees from the cause to the effect. This is why we have to develop mindfulness and steady alertness, continuous alertness. Because it's only then that you can start seeing the connections. And only when you see the connections can you let them go. This way he says that mindfulness is our, is our refuge, it's our island. We can learn lessons and then we can apply them. The learning requires that we see from cause to effect, and the application lies in seeing, okay, we saw this type of cause before, and, this, and we know what kind of effect it's going to lead to. Is this going to be worth it? We can learn to avoid a lot of suffering just by that much. So as John Lee used to say, have a lot of gratitude for your mindfulness, because all your other good qualities are going to grow out of it. And ultimately, those good qualities can lead to something beyond birth and beyond death. And that's when we'll be truly safe and happy.